All right, so it's recording. Thank you so much, Delphine. I'm so excited to talk to you today. Um, woke you up, I know. Um, uh, so you are like the Pinterest queen, and I, I really want to dig d deep into Pinterest and what the benefits are and that sort of thing. But uh, let's go into the intro, and we'll get started right now. Hi, my name is Brandon and I spent the last 10 years of my life in the fitness industry in which I turned a hobby into a $100,000 a year career. But I got bored and I wanted a new challenge. The challenge? Create a million dollar a year business. The only problem was I have no idea what I'm going to do. Follow me as I travel halfway across the country to start my business from zero. This podcast is to show you my struggles and successes and everything in between. Join me and follow along as I document my journey of starting over. Using only today's best networking techniques, growth hacks, and sales funnels to grow my million dollar a year business. My name is Brandon Duff, and let's change lives together. This is The Money Friends. So super excited to talk to you. Now we're digging in deep about Pinterest and what the benefits are and why people should be on it or if they should be on it. So let's just, you know, just start off the bat. You know, rapid fire like three questions at you. What is Pinterest and why is it important uh, in someone's business? Okay, so first of all, thanks for having me here. Um, what is Pinterest? Well, obviously it's a social media platform, but very different from other um, social media platform for the um, simple reason that there's practically no interaction with other users um you may get a random message from someone um every now and then but other than that there's literally no messaging no commenting nothing of that sort okay. um it's a platform that was initially created mostly for bloggers so it does require some really really high quality content in terms of writing or vlogging video okay so is it is it kind of like medium or is it, um, how is it different than Medium? Because it seems like both of those are uh, almost like blogging platforms. So it's different in the sense that on Medium, you, you don't fully control what you're posting. Medium owns the platform and um, you can't host your blogs. You can only share them there. Got it. It's also a lot more difficult to monetize uh, Medium. I've been on Medium for a long time and um, quite frankly, the only way you can make money out of it is if you were to to blog at a ridiculous uh, um, rhythm. It, it just doesn't work for me. Um, Pinterest allows you to claim your own website. So basically, you have complete control over the, the content that you're putting out on Pinterest as, lo as long, of course, as you are complying with their, their guidelines. Um, but what makes it so interesting is the potential for monetization. If you get the ropes of it, which is really not that hard. I know a lot of people are a little put off in the beginning by the amount of commitment and work it takes initially. And I want to insist on initially, but once you get it, uh, and once you get in the groove of it, there are literally bloggers that make easily anywhere between 20 to 30 K per month, if not more. Huh. By spending an average of, I want to say, probably two to three hours per week. Wow. Period. So that's what kind of, a, of, of um, drew me to it. One, the fact that I'm a writer. That's my creative medium. So to me, that was, a, um, um, that was an obvious match. Um, two, um, wow. I'm just not good with platforms like Instagram, Facebook, I have a love-hate relationship with it. Like regularly, every now and then I need to take a break from it because it, it's just, it gets a little overwhelming. But all of these platforms where you can easily get sucked into consuming other people's content and that will take you away from your prime focus, which is running your business. Let's, let's right. you know, let's say it. Um, Pinterest really, really allows you to put out really high quality content spending no more than i would say two to three hours a week um once you have a good rhythm on it so that that's a huge advantage yeah pinterest is it's very uh and i feel like the photos are really high quality very um striking it's very uh eye-catching um yeah. 
also it seems like uh, there's a certain demographic to uh, Pinterest. Is there a certain uh, niche or a niche that people should focus going into Pinterest or is it uh, kind of all inclusive um, platform people should be on? Yes and no. So regarding the quality that you mentioned, um, Pinterest was very smart to set the bar really high from the beginning. Literally, your pins, your images, and your content will not even make it to the platform unless you abide to some, some rules that are pretty strict in terms of quality of your images, the fact that you're not infringing um, in the quality of the content. Spamming on Pinterest is practically impossible. Users also um, somehow ha have this like die hard um, uh, loyalty to the platform. And whenever you click on a pin that's taking you to a destination that has nothing to do with the title or the description, they will report you. And there's no if and why, you'll get banned. Wow. That's it. It's like they don't play. They literally will will hold you to a very very high standard of quality which is probably one of the main reasons why a lot of people are a little intimidated by it in the beginning and they feel like it's just so much work right but it's not entirely true and at the end of the day i mean we should be putting out quality content i'm sorry right. but that's the way i look at it exactly. um so that's well, to answer the first part of your question um is it a specific niche um it used to be that Pinterest was most specifically for things like fashion and arts and crafts and home decor, um, moms in general and the mom lifestyle and kids right. and stuff do really, really well. It's not even true anymore because the platform has evolved so much that I want to say almost every industry, maybe to the exception of some really, really obscure thing, um, can do really well. As a matter of fact, if you look at the trends, uh, currently this week, obviously due to our current situation, one of the most trending um, hashtag on Pinterest is work from home. So oh, if, you nice. have, yeah, if you have in, an activity, a business that has anything to do with um, work from home opportunities, whether it's affiliate marketing, network marketing, and MLM, anything like that, and you want to go and put out content on Pinterest, you're, you have a very, very good chance to get a lot of attention a lot of following and a lot of qualified leads, which is the difference between um, you know, Pinterest and the other platforms. Is the, a lot of time we, we attract a lot of people that are really, really not a good match for our businesses and we kind of have to skim through um, you know, all the defense sitters and, and people that are just making us waste our time, so. Yeah, definitely, and, and what's great is I know that when you have someone like that is an expert like you who's in Pinterest, you can set up their profile um, if they're not an expert in uh, on social media or on that social media platform. I know there's some intricacies between the different platforms, between TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, mm -hmm. you know, all these different ones. So knowing what is the right way to kind of set things up uh, really kind of dictates how you do uh, and how far, not how far you go, but how quickly you can like level up your profile, I guess, and get it seen. Uh, if it's not, you need to do it correctly uh, right away when you start doing it, or other words, it's not going to go the way you want it. So is there any kind of um, ways, like most people have a profile funnel with Facebook. Is there anything uh, people need to kind of start out doing on Pinterest that kind of helps them go um, and grow their profile a little bit easier? Well, you're not going to be able to link Facebook directly anyways, because when you, when you create a business profile, um, you are expected to claim a website or a landing page. So you're going to need a domain, essentially. That's what, oh, wow. that's what I'm trying to say. So you can't just link your Facebook page to Pinterest. It's not going to work that way. So one way or the other, you're going to have to create a domain. Um, then what you decide to put to link to that domain is entirely your decision in your business. And, and obviously it's going to impact your results, but um, no, you can't just take Pinterest directly to YouTube or directly to um, um, Facebook. You can, however, once you do have uh, that landing page or that um, website, 
uh, link your YouTube or your Facebook content and repurpose it for Pinterest. As a matter of fact, video currently is the type of content that does the best in terms of what ranks to the, 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 the homepage, the search page on, on Pinterest, um, including short videos on TikTok and whatnot. Right. So you can absolutely merge all of these different platforms and perform really, really well, but you're still going to have to do your homework, create at least, if not a website, because I'm not a big believer in multi-pages website myself, but if anything, some kind of a landing page or a blog, definitely a blog, because you're going to need some written content for um, your Pinterest account. Yeah, and I like that you said repurposing. I'm all about automation and really how to automate things. So there, there's tools out there that will automatically, if you post uh, like on Facebook, it will then post on Pinterest. I have one that um, if you post on YouTube um, and you make it public, it will post on Instagram, or not on Instagram, on Pinterest. And those are really cool tools that you can use to really automate that part of it. But like you actually do, the, the, the heavy duty lifting of getting the profile that kind of like give it that facelift, which I love because uh, it allows them to get more traction, more organic traffic, um, just a lot more than just the automation part of it, right? So um, automation is kind of extra. It's not all the SEO that's involved and all the, the um, tags and making sure that you actually know kind of what you, your, how you're structuring your, uh, your article or your, your post um, so like that's that's so great that you actually um, have mastered that like I have no idea about Pinterest I'm oh, I've always been fascinated so for me this is kind of like self-serving because I get to pick your brain and kind of learn a little bit more about Pinterest and how sure. I'm wrong so sure. I'm, I'm, I'm happy I'm, I'm always I'm super super passionate about Pinterest as a platform literally that's that I can spend hours on it the difference is um, I mean no offense to Facebook lovers or Instagram lovers but you're gonna spend hours on Instagram and Facebook and and here you are hours later and you kind of feel like oh my god what have I done with my time not much besides scrolling through a bunch of stupid posts and pictures and I haven't really learned much. You might sometimes come across a post that's really relevant and right. might actually bring you value, but the value is not really there. When you scroll through um, the content on Pinterest, you kind of fall down that rabbit hole because it's the opposite. Right. The quality of the content is just so insane that you can't stop reading. You're going to fall upon article upon article upon article, and then you just can't stop. Um, after most of my education as an entrepreneur, as a matter of fact, through Pinterest, believe it or wow. not. Yeah, with the how-tos and to do it yourself. And then eventually you reach a point where you do realize you need someone to jump in and, and help you out. You can only go so far on your own. I'm, I'm, I'm a huge believer of that. Um, eventually you're gonna have to hire somebody to take you, you know, the extra step and actually put things together and make them work. Um, automation, however, because I know you, you're, the same way I'm, I'm your Pinterest expert, you're my go-to guy when it comes to automation. I mean, how many times have I actually come tug on your sleeve asking for help? Right, right. Um, right. Automation is kind of a hit or miss thing on Pinterest. They do have tools. There's um, that I know of. There, there are two things that you can use on Pinterest. The most popular one being, of course, Tailwind. And there's another one called um, um, Ninja Pinner, I think it's something like that. Um, there's two schools when it comes to um, Tailwind. Some people love it, they swear by it, they, they use it, they say it'll grow their um, accounts really quickly. I'm obsessed with SEO and keywords. I'm literally, and that's probably why people love hiring me to create their accounts because the way you're going to set up your account in the beginning with all of your keywords and your SEO is what is going to make or break right. your success in the long exactly. run. Um, it's really important for people to understand Pinterest is not a, um, a, a get rich quick kind of scheme. You're not going to monetize it in one or two months. You have to have patience. That's definitely kind of your long-term kind of project. It can be very lucrative as long as you understand 
um, you're going to have to wait a few months to start seeing some serious results. But it all really um, relies on how well you set up your SEO in the beginning. And the problem is, it's like any other platform, it works with an algorithm that reads your pictures and reads your keywords. So if you have one algorithm trying to communicate with another algorithm, Kelwin, right? Well, that's a recipe for disaster. I personally don't recommend doing it, at least not in the beginning. Right. Um, um, for individual accounts, of course. If you, if you um, are running multiple accounts as an agency, I can totally see why agencies are using Kelwin. That would be, that would be bananas, trying to, to do that manually for 10, 15, or 20 accounts. But someone like me who does it for individual, I do everything manually at least for the first two to three months. I, I, would, I almost want to say it's, it should be mandatory. If you want um, the algorithm to truly understand who you are, what you do, what you're selling or promoting, and who you're talking to, because otherwise it can really, really um, sidetrack you and, 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 and really not work in the long run. Yeah, well, when you, you think that with any kind of social media, one, it takes a little bit to get set up. You look at our um, just Facebook, getting and start people learning what a social media funnel is, what, how to put the different links in the different things, how to set everything up correctly, how to start uh, building people to um, build value in groups and start building those connections. So everything mm -hmm. takes a little bit of time setting up. So, um, and as you should, you need to build um, age into your account. You need to build age into um, both your Facebook account. Um, I mean, we tell people using our software for lead generation on Facebook. Um, you know, you need to, you can't just uh, remove uh, your like 50 or 100 inactive friends, right? Like from zero to 100. Like you have to kind of um, piece into it. So like you can't if you've never done that before, if you've never removed 10 people or 20 people at a time and you have the same 800 people you've had for a year, uh, and then you start removing 100 people, that's gonna look really fishy um, to Facebook and Facebook's gonna be like, hey, what are they doing? Let's not show their content. They might have um, some red flags going on here. Same thing with Pinterest. If you play without um, outside the rules, then uh, you kind of, get burned so you need to do it slowly and build it up and hire someone like you who's uh, knows what they're doing and can protect your account and make sure that you're getting the most uh, organic traffic that's possible uh, for your account until you are ready to start uh, scaling it or using these softwares to uh, really uh, take over the the heavy lifting of some of uh, the things you need to do on social media yeah but, um, but here's what's really important for your, um, your viewers and your, your followers to understand, because I'm not sure that everybody is, is really aware of that. Um, why is Pinterest such a great tool for um, lead generation? Very simple reason. People use it as a search engine. It's actually the, one of the top three search engines on the internet currently, meaning they go on it to look for ideas, inspiration, or something to buy, right? Right. Um, 81% of people who use Pinterest end up actually buying. So that's a really, really high number. Wow. They literally go on Pinterest and people don't go on Facebook every morning thinking, well, what am I going to buy today? It's quite the opposite. As a matter of fact, everybody is annoyed at how much they're bombarded with offers. And you can see post after post after post about how, um, how, you know, um, annoying that is. Pinterest is totally the, the contrary. It's like, we all know why we're here. We're here right. to buy, we're here to talk business, we're here to talk shop, that's totally fine. And every, the entire structure revolves around that. And should you find what you came here for, no problem, you'll make a purchase. So that's a huge advantage, that's one. Um, second is, because people come with the intention to buy and they are literally looking for that specific product, if you know how to position yourself, if you know what you're doing in terms of marketing, right, um, then people will find you. And by definition, that makes them pre-qualified leads because they're looking for you, they're looking for your product, they're already interested in what you get. Your only job is to make sure that you have a high visibility that you're clear about your offer, that you have a 
good offer to begin with and that you have a strong call to action. Done, period, that's it. You don't have to chase anybody. So I, I think it's huge without ever having to pay for, um, for advertisement. You can do a sponsored pin every now and then just for the hell of it to give it a, to give it a try. Right. Um, it, it's pretty spectacular. I've tried Facebook ads for the longest time. I knew I, you really have to go to an expert to do Facebook ads if you don't know what you're doing or they could end up costing you a lot of money and not get you a lot of results. Um, sponsored pins, however, I, I took a course recently, really understand um, um, the numbers behind it, right? And, and what's the benefit of doing them? What's the benefit of doing them? It's, it's crazy. I gave it a shot following the steps that uh, the woman that was giving the course was, was teaching us. And I just put out one of my pins um, to, uh, for, um, to be sponsored for seven days with a budget of 10 bucks a day, which was $70, right? right. I ended up getting over 300,000 views for that particular wow. code, that particular pin. Now, if, you're, if you think in terms of these people are qualified people, what you want to know is how many sales did I get from that? Well, for a product that at the time I was an affiliate for, that sells between $100 and $500, I ended up selling 15 units of it. It's insane. So for a $70 investment right. over the course of seven days, and I ended, up, I ended up having people, 15 people signing into my affiliate program. Um, I mean, you do the math. You're better with numbers than I am. That <laughs> that's I insane. No, that's, that's awesome. I mean, I mean, just the ROI on that is just bonkers. Like, that's so cool. And I don't know why. I mean, if you think about it, too, the, the, the – um, the content that you're putting out on um, Pinterest is so high quality that it's almost like, um, like they're a warm audience or hot audience because they're already bought into what you're, they're reading and what they're seeing. So it just allows you to um, sell them right away and people are going to dig it. And you build your list also. That's the most important part. Once, you, once people click on a, on a pin and you take them off Pinterest, and they go over to your website or um, your blog. As long as you have uh, the right lead magnets, uh, a good um, opt-in form, you, you can literally build a huge email list in a very, very short period of time. And then these people become pretty much lifetime clients because right. all you got to do is periodically send you know, a few email campaign about whatever new course or product you're launching and and these people are yours. You right. know, it all it all revolves around the quality of the content you're putting out. As long as the the you know the videos or the blogs that you're posting match your expectation, you focus on their needs, you focus on their problems, and you focus on showing up as the solution to that problem. They're yours. They're right. yours, and they're going to be buying from you ongoing for sure. No matter what industry you're in. So what do you, what do you exactly help with uh, customers or your clients do on Pinterest? Are you, do you help them create the pin itself? Do you help them uh, drive traffic from Pinterest? Do you help set up their profile? Do you do it all? What is, what, what is your particular uh, expertise in that? I do it all. I do it all. Um, typically, I get people who know absolutely nothing but heard about what an amazing platform it is. And they want to get on it, but they feel very overwhelmed by all the moving pieces. Right. So what we do is we sign up for um, three months. And I set up from scratch, literally from scratch. I will start a new account. I don't recommend converting a personal account into a business account, by the way. It's not a good strategy, even though that's what everybody else teaches out there. Um, I tend to go against the the most right. common advice i tend to go against the grain like everybody will tell you to create personal boards mm, no everybody will tell you to automate mm, no i prefer doing things manually so um i will start their account from scratch and i will make sure to set up all of their seo properly and i create um pins literally i design them manually wow and i create their blogs i write them i'm also a copywriter so that's the advantage they get fresh blogs weekly um, 
organic blogs written by hand. It's not one of these generators that most people use um, based on whatever they want me to write about. Uh, I also make sure that they're compliant, that they're not breaking any guidelines, they're getting into trouble. I mm -hmm. even help them build um, what we call freebies, you know, the lead magnets and everything. I set it up completely as if it were my own um, account, so cool. and then I grow it. And I tell them that on average, you should expect to have a growth of around around 50 to 100,000 views a month if you're doing things right. Um, that's, that's, that's about an average growth, um, depending, on, depending on what you're selling. Some, some niches are a little saturated, so it may take a little bit more uh, time because you're going against so much competition that your pins are going to have a, um, um, more difficulty being seen. Right. Uh, yeah, I do everything. And as uh, time goes by, I start recording tutorials and videos and showing them exactly my strategy and how I go about it so that eventually they can take over and carry it on themselves. That's so cool. So do you, um, what do you like most? Do you like setting up the accounts most or do you like managing? Like say for instance, I've had my account for three years. I have like, I don't know, a thousand pins. I don't know. I don't know numbers. I'm just, uh, whatever. I say, hey, uh, I want you to take this over. Is that something you would do too or and manage it or do you just, oh yeah, okay. Yeah, most people actually come to me, they already have an account. I have to audit it first and right. see what content is on it. How is it performing? How is the algorithm reading it? Is it worth uh, keeping the same account up or should I just start with a brand new one? Most cases, I will, I will say start with a brand new one because the, the algorithm on Pinterest is constantly evolving, it's constantly changing. Um, they give webinars, as a matter of fact, where uh, VAs and Pinterest managers um, are allowed to attend so that we can stay on top of the new trends. That's so cool. when I feel like, you know what, this account has too much history, and there's been too many conversation going on over here. The, the, if we change direction now, it's going to confuse the heck out of the algorithm. You're better off starting with a new one. Let's just start fresh. That makes um, sense. That too, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, because it's kind of based on what uh, relevancy, right? Just like Facebook and you know any any platform is based on relevancy. And if you uh, and a lot of people make this mistake on Facebook, um, they have all these. Uh, different audiences on their profile and their suggested friends are typically friends that just don't um, kind of align with their new audience because they haven't really built that audience out yet or the algorithm for uh, Pinterest or Facebook or whatever and they're not able to really get the organic reach that they once were getting and they're not getting the, the, the friends suggestions or the pin suggestions or whatever that they uh, should be getting because they have so many different audiences um, uh, connected. So uh, like a lot of people make the mistake of when they um, go from, uh, well, I don't know, from uh, high school and college and have, you know, all these different audiences over the last 10 years and then they go in the workforce, they have this huge mix of people from, uh, you know, Aunt Betty who they've never seen um, and then like uh, Josh, who is their best friend from like second grade, and then uh, you know this guy who might be a lead. So it really hurts people's Facebooks if they constantly have the same um, Facebook account that they've had for like 20 years or 10 years or whatever it is. So I can totally understand how starting over on a new Pinterest account can really help uh, kind of, uh, I guess, push your content a lot further because you don't have all these kind of things weighing it down. I was trying to think of the, a good word, but I just couldn't think of it, so. No, I, I know exactly what you're saying. I'm totally following you because I've been, I've been logging that account behind me for I don't know how many years. Like I've been going back and forth, two different accounts. There's one that I finally shut down. It's a long story, I'll spare you the details. But now I'm back to an account that I had back in the days and I'm, I'm struggling to, to build it up again. My numbers are actually not a good reflection of how good I am at this thing. And most people wouldn't understand it's actually nothing I'm doing. It's the fact that I'm, I'm trying to retrain the algorithm and understand 
what I'm doing now right. because I started out with one type of coaching business and then um, I, I took a different direction uh, and the algorithm, algorithm doesn't understand that. It's still showing my content to the wrong people and that's the right. reason why I'm performing well. Right. Um, my mistake was that I, I, I had to stay on the same account because I had already claimed my, my domain. And meanwhile, I have brand new clients that I started brand new accounts for two months ago and their stats are way better than mine. That's embarrassing, but whatever. I'd rather have better results for them than for myself. You know, that's what matters. Exactly. You don't have time to really focus on your accounts when you are too busy uh, really helping your other clients grow their accounts. So that's not a bad reflection on you. That's a good reflection on you, actually. No, I know, I know, but it's ironic. You know, people are like, well, you know, give me your, uh, give me your handle. I'll go and take a look. I'm like, ooh, please don't look at the numbers. Look at the, the click on the, on the, on the, on the pins. Go read my blog. You, you'll get a better uh, idea of what a good writer I am and the whole structure of the actual account and how it's linked to my blog and how I have the bot starting when you go there and. All of these different things that I can put together for you, you can have the exact same strategy. I'm going to hook it up to a chatbot and do all these different things. That's what you really want to look at. Don't look at the actual numbers on the page. It's not, it's not significant. Right? Well, I mean, obviously you all have, uh, you have like testimonials and all that fun stuff. So that's not a big deal. But I, I, I think that's cool. I didn't even know that they had chatbots. I'm a big fan of chatbots on Facebook um, and having that option on your social media because it, it allows for another platform to really communicate with your audience. A lot of people don't realize that uh, we all have different forms of communication and a lot of people just try and get their target audience to really just try and talk to them on their preferred um, communication level. Um, and a lot of people don't do that right. So like what you need to do is like for me, I have a text messaging platform. I have chat bots, I have email, I have my Facebook messenger, I have comments. So all these ways that people can communicate to me and then I can communicate back to them on their preferred platform. So having a, a Pinterest and a chat bot on that platform is just one more way you can have people reach out to you, get more leads and really build your business. I think that's really cool that they have that option. Plus the option, like you said, having that website on there builds credibility, so. Just to clarify, um, you can install a chat bot directly on Pinterest, but like I said oh. before, once people click on your image, they, you take them off the, the platform and you take them onto your own website. So once they're on your website, you can pretty much do whatever you want with right, them. Right, right. You take them wherever you want. So. If you choose to install a chatbot on you, I have them personally, I have them on my blog post. Got Most it. people will have the pop-up, which I find incredibly obnoxious. I don't like pop-ups. They, they, I, I, I close them. I don't, see, this is the thing is, I always think in terms of the way I feel about a certain thing is probably the way everybody else feels about, because I'm not that special. Uh, so if I'm reading an article, well, thank you. But I mean, we all tend to, you know, it's, the whole, the whole, like, we all tend to think the same way anyways, it will behave the same way. If I'm reading a good article, look, you could have the best lead magnet. It's still bothering me. It's annoying me, and I'm going to miss out on him and I'm going to, on it, and I'm going to end up not signing up for your, your list because it's, it's, excuse my French, it's pissing me off. It keeps popping up in my face. So I end up closing them as opposed to having a chatbot strategically, um, um, located towards the, I would say 50% of your blog gives people a chance to get familiar with your writing. Right. Um, decide if the content is good enough, if they like the way you write, if it matches their expectation, is this why I'm here? Is this what I would expect to read about? Yeah, this is cool. Okay. And chapters are a lot less invasive in my opinion than the actual huge ass pop-ups that take up all take up all the screen I, I just really don't like them i think you got that right okay um and then you start a conversation and you're still collecting emails you're still collecting information it, it's not that much different from an actual email campaign except that now you're just like you said you're right. having a conversation as opposed to um um email marketing which is not entirely dead but is not totally alive either That's right really, really open them, so.
Yeah, no, I love I love chatbots too because they make it so personable now. I use them for Facebook a lot, and a lot of the ones that you can use on Facebook and in, uh, integrate with uh, a blog post and you know all these different ones. And it's really nice because it, it's interactive. They have choices. You can do surveys. Uh, you can segment your audience. So the chatbots can, if someone comes on to your blog post from uh, how to make money online, and then you um, say for uh, from home, and then you have another blog post on how to make money from affiliate marketing um, or MLM and affiliate marketing, then you can segment that audience and um, really have the, each uh, conversation create a different tag for it the way they actually came in so that you can build those different lists and you can really create uh, your content for both of those, uh, those um, segments and lists. So I think that's really cool that, um, um, that you are able to create all this content around uh, just high value content because I'm all about always putting high value content out there. So I think I would, I would really love Pinterest actually. You would do amazing on it because you have so many tutorials on your Facebook page, which is what you, you know how our friendship started. It's like, I'm just like you. I believe in putting out a lot of content, putting out a lot of value. Um, that's how you build relationship with people. I'm right. really, really, really good about that. And you have a ton of tutorials. Um, and, and you already have a website, to, to my knowledge, I believe you do. So it's easy. Once you claim that, that domain you can literally link your pins to the video if you have a call to action directly on the pin that says watch this tutorial watch this five minute video watch this two minute video watch this step-by-step -step guide what uh let, those are the, those are the most popular ones right now they're catnip if you tell people they're not going to have to read it's not something that's going to take up 11 or 12 minutes of their time. I'll go right now. Seriously, where do you have to go? What else do you have to do? Right. Uh, um, the, those are really the most popular right now. If you take people to any kind of, um, yeah, tutorials are doing really, really well. So you would make an absolute killing because that's what people come on Pinterest to begin with, to learn how to do something on their own. Yeah, I, I definitely start looking into it because it's definitely a, another form, another way to get uh, just organic traffic. And like you said, they're a really uh, hot buyer uh, crowd because they're there to research, do uh, what they're out to do. And if they need to buy something to get that task done, then they're going to, uh, they're going to do that. And uh, they're looking for the quickest route possible. If you look at any kind of social media or um, uh, actually, yeah, I'm going to start really focusing on that because so if you look at social media versus a lot of these other platforms like Pinterest and YouTube, those are very intense and Google, very intense marketing. They're out there searching uh, for things on uh, how to fix or how to do on YouTube or on Pinterest and on Google and on Facebook. They're more looking um, for distraction. So it's very uh, destructive marketing on uh, uh, TikTok, on Facebook, on Instagram. So you need to know your platform that you're on. And uh, just by the type of uh, content, if it's uh, destructive versus uh, intense, it's going, to, it's going to sell a lot better just because uh, you're not trying to disrupt someone. You are trying to just give them and pre provide a, a itch that needs to be scratched because they've already kind of um, are looking for something. So now you're just helping them uh, kind of get over that hump. So I think that's uh, Pinterest is a really great way to be successful. Um, I'm going to definitely really look into it. Um, I know you definitely need to get a course out there because a course is going to be. That's my next step. That's my next step. Um... I'm, I'm already building a course with somebody else on another topic that I feel very passionate about. Then once we launch that course, I'm going to go back to his team and we're going to build a Pinterest course because everybody tells me I have to do one. In the meantime, however, if anybody wants a really, really good course on Pinterest, um, I've taken just about every course on the face of earth on Pinterest. I'm, I'm really obsessed with them. Um, and I'm always happy to recommend my top 
three, I would say, and they're all different price ranges, um, ranging from 50 bucks to way up there. Um, they're mostly courses for bloggers, but they're really the ones that are going to teach you how to leverage the platform, monetize it like crazy, and really get you to understand um, the numbers behind, behind Pinterest, which is really the most important part. Um, and right here on Facebook, we have my girl Lori, Lori Soma, who is definitely one of the top uh, coaches. I learned from her. She was one of the two people that I got trained by. Uh, she's somebody who is getting somewhere near to a million views per month. Wow. Sanity, and she would probably back me up in saying, yeah, I spend, what, maybe an, an hour or two per week? Because now she has it on such a good, um, you know, she has such a good system going on that all she has to do is repurpose her uh, lives from Facebook and her videos from TikTok and stuff like that. She repurposes all of her content and she's still getting millions of views and she sells precisely, well, her Pinterest course, which by the way, right now she is giving away um, at a pay what you can on a pay what you can basis due to this whole um, madness going on. So uh, I don't have my own course, but if you guys want to know about Lori Soma's course, you're more than welcome to contact me. I will hook you up with her. Now is the time to go get it because normally it's a little $200. It's very, very thorough, but right now you pay what you can. Um, and through her Pinterest account, she's selling her books which got her number one on Amazon. Pinterest was her wow. main form of promotion. She's selling her coaching programs, um, all sorts of things. And she's been doing so for a few years now and she's making a full income very comfortably. So you can absolutely do it. Yeah. That's awesome. And where can people find out about you? Uh, I know you said you have a blog. If someone wanted to hire you, should they just contact you on Facebook? Or what's the best way to, uh, to get in contact with you, Jessica? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm actually, believe it or not, I transferred my blog today to a different uh, platform because I needed to, um, like I said, I'm crazy. I needed to optimize my SEO some more. So it should be up and running by the end of the day. Otherwise, my blog is called uh, Launch and Rise. Um, that's kind of the name of the, my company. That's where you'll find me across the across the board. If you go on Facebook, you can find me under my name. I have a business page as well called Launch and Rise, where you'll get a little bit more info about exactly what type of services I provide when it comes to Pinterest, how much it costs. Forget about the cost right now. I get it. No, nobody really knows what's going to happen. So just get on uh, Messenger. Um, hit me up. Let's get on the phone and we'll talk about whatever you can do. Um, I'm, I'm more than willing to negotiate. That's definitely not an issue. Um, and uh, normally getting trained by me one on one is, is a service that I charge for. I'm not talking about full management. Full management, obviously, I still have to ask for a little bit of money because it's a lot of time. Um, but for one-on-one -on -one training, I normally charge for, I decided a few days ago that because of everything that's going on at the moment, I was going to do it for free. So um, not individually, because that would be bananas. I would literally end up not right. having time for anything else. But what I'm, I'm going to do is probably by the end of this week, I'm going to start setting up tutorials on my business page. Um, I've already gathered a really nice group of people. I'm just waiting for a few more people to raise their hand and say, I'm interested. Now, if you go to my business page, I already have quite a few tutorials, but they're very basic tutorials on just how to create an account and how to, this is how you create a pin. This is how you claim. Okay. This is pretty basic. These are going to be the type of trainings that I give one-on-one -on -one to people who normally pay me. Like I'm really going to teach like just of it. Like, how to rank up, how to monetize, the things you should have, uh, uh, avoid. Um, literally, I'm going to teach people how to manage their account the same way I manage my own or a, a paying client. So that, that's going to be the real deal. Well, that's what's great too is you can use that and take that, um, that group that you already have 
and take them through uh, your kind of your paid program, uh, get social proof, use that social proof to pre-sell, and really allow people to learn what you, what amazing work you can do and what you have done already. I mean, you have clients that are already doing 300,000 views a month. And if they're getting that many views, um, think of the conversions. I mean, if, even if it's 1% conversions, um, like, like that girlfriend of yours said that she's getting 15, um, or you got 15 from a uh, affiliate marketing product. I mean, that's going to change a lot of people's lives. So uh, it's it's super important to start looking at Pinterest as more of a uh, intent marketing uh, platform, um, really kind of like YouTube, kind of like Google, and really uh, you know reach out to Delphine and really learn how the platform works and. Um, go through her group program because that's really going to help you guys understand how you can really level up your business, how you can get organic view, views on your platform and help you grow your business online. So anything else you want to break us down with Delphine? You want to give us uh, some of the last uh, knowledge bombs or golden nuggets before you uh, let us go? I don't know. I think we pretty much went over um, over everything. I mean, now is the time. People have time on their hands. Now is the time to go and explore the platform and take a look around and um, I think kind of measure the potential. Anyone who's been thinking about putting out a course, um, there's no better time than now to put out a course. And if they're wondering how to lo how do I launch it, how do I promote it, how do I sell it without having to spend tens of thousands of dollars on Facebook ads, that's how. Right. That's how. You, you put it out on Pinterest and you blog about it and you learn how to um, search for the right keywords and the right SEO and you bring everybody to your yard and that's how. Yeah, I, I love it. I think that's so great. Uh, thank you so much, Delphine. Uh, if you guys want to get in, uh, get in contact with Delphine, uh, get with her either on Facebook with her launch and ride uh, uh, blog post and she will definitely get you set up and like like uh, she said she has uh, plenty of resources lots of tools so that you can be successful on Instagram not Instagram Pinterest and really um, take your business to that next level so that you can really build out these you know, these multiple platforms to get you uh, as much organic traffic or just traffic in general, you guys. So thanks so much. I appreciate you. It's always been a pleasure. I've been Welcome. wanting to talk to you for so long and you finally were able to make time for me. So uh, thank you so much. And um, yeah, I'll uh, definitely do this again soon. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Hey, everyone. If you love this episode, go ahead and rate and subscribe to it. I really appreciate the feedback. And if you don't, go ahead and unsubscribe. I'm just kidding. Don't unsubscribe. Go and send me an email and tell me how I can improve. Thanks so much. Have a good one, guys. Peace.